I know how hard it can be to be a parent of a diabetic. The late night finger checks, uh, variations in blood glucose, um, difficulties with just being a kid and having diabetes, the emotional challenges. These are all things that Jack struggles with, my son, as well as my family. So doing this research is the most important thing I can do as a scientist and a father. The Schultz Diabetes Institute has a long history of success in pancreas and islet transplantation. And I came to the University of Minnesota because I knew that this is the place where the cure for type 1 diabetes will happen. Twenty years ago, the only really largely applied treatment was actually insulin injections. And it was always a guess as to what you would need. Sure, there was glucose sensors and uh, pumps and that, but it was guesswork. Specifically in pancreas transplantation, we were in a different era. Um, we had older uh, anti-rejection medications, uh, older anti-infective agents. Surgical techniques were not as evolved. And so what we wanted to do was for every diabetic to have beta cells. And that was an area of research 20 years ago, which was really kind of just beginning. It, it, it wasn't that it was a new concept, but nobody had really been able to figure out exactly how to do it. It's been incumbent upon us to make transplantation better to the point where it really does benefit patients uh, who fail with the current insulin management. It was in 1999 that we actually first did human islet uh, transplants with some modern techniques of islet isolation. We were able to show that we could induce insulin independence in diabetic patients, even with one donor. And that was a breakthrough because uh, other centers had had to use more than one donor. And now we're really done with the research phase on it. What we need is approval from the FDA so we can transplant uh, human islets to any diabetic patient who could benefit. With the advent of um, islet transplantation, what will be the impact on pancreas transplantation? Perhaps the threshold to doing transplant for diabetics would be lower if we have islet transplantation become everyday practice because it does not involve major surgery. Therefore, it could be applied to a, a wider range of What we want to accomplish is we want to better understand how the human immune system recognizes the transplanted islets so that more islets can engraft and they can last longer to reduce secondary complications to type 1 diabetes as well as produce insulin on a regular basis to support someone's life. Now with pancreas and islet transplantation we have accomplished many many things but we don't want to stop here because now we see tremendous opportunities ahead of us. What's really exciting about type 1 diabetes research now is that we have better tools, more sensitive instruments, and with those new tools, we have really powerful ideas on how to change the genetics in pigs to be better islet donors for transplantation. And with the use of the latest technology in genetic engineering, we can transplant now islets without the need for chronic immunosuppression. This is unprecedented, unheard of, doing transplants without immunosuppression. And we have now data to indicate that this can be a reality very soon from now. We want to make this cell-based transplant cure available to tens of thousands of patients around the world. So this is a very exciting time. I wanted to thank you so much for your generous support and I hope we can count on your continued support to make a reality what we think is really going to be great and a whole new life for people with diabetes. Thank you from the bottom of my pancreas.